2023 will long be remembered in the Western Cape for the frequency and severity of the winter floods. With this fresh in our minds, it's easy to forget that just years earlier, we faced the devastating effects of a three-year drought and even mentions of day zero. This pendulum and the rapid shortening of the time span between natural disasters is a reality. What we all agree on is that we need to act sooner rather than later. Our rivers and our wetlands are the buffers to extreme weather conditions. The healthier the system, the more resilient. Looking at the floods of 2023 proves this. The Western Cape Department of Agriculture estimated losses for the July 2023 floods is 1.053 billion rand. A second flood occurred in September, which resulted in damages to infrastructure estimated at 595 million rand and 11 reported fatalities. Climate change is one of the key drivers of environmental change in the province. The Western Cape is identified as particularly vulnerable to climate change as the region is highly dependent on its water storage capacity due to the dominant winter rainfall patterns. According to projections by the Department of Environmental Affairs and Development Planning, climate change will bring about an increase in average temperatures and possibly lower annual rainfall in the Western Cape. While average annual rainfall might decline, rainfall will likely occur as fewer, more intense rainfall events with increased potential for flooding and reduced groundwater recharge capacity. Even though droughts and flooding on a more regular cycle as a result of climate change, it is not something we can control, well at least not in the short term. Both these floods resulted in disastrous effects on various levels of society. What we do have more an immediate level of control over is the river systems that both transport and store our water. The difference between a flood and a disastrous flood is not necessarily the volume or velocity of the water, but a reflection on how the ecosystem and particularly the river systems can handle it. The latest State of the River report of 2018 released by the Department of Water and Sanitation gives an insight into the health of the rivers in the Western Cape. Rivers are divided into categories showing the level of modification and deviation from their natural state. The report indicates that more than 20% of rivers in the Western Cape are critically or seriously modified, with less than 50% of the rivers still in a natural or largely natural state. The state of the rivers has not improved since then, and with the devastating effects of the 2023 floods, even more large-scale modification took place in an attempt to manage and mitigate future damage. Why is modification of rivers seen as a negative? Rivers in their natural unmodified state have several key characteristics. Firstly, they sustain the micro and macro ecosystems, which leads to the provision of clean surface water and subsurface water. This in turn assists in sustainability and mitigate the effect of natural disasters. Once the need surpasses the immediate ability to supply, modifications become necessary to ensure supply. This may be in the form of dams, extraction points, or modifications to the banks and natural vegetation. These modifications does however directly and indirectly impact the key characteristics of the river. These alterations often address the immediate concern but at the real expense of a future event and adding to the degradation of the bigger catchment. According to Stats SA, agriculture is the country's largest water user, using about 62% of the available water resources nationally. In the Western Cape, agriculture uses 40% of the available water resources. The Western Cape's economy is strongly influenced by the state of the agricultural center and has a key role in food production. Water quantity and quality are both affected by catchment conditions. One of the effects of modification is the introduction of invasive plant species. Invasive alien trees such as wattle or acacia and gum, eucalyptus, use about 7% of the country's total annual runoff. Projections estimate that if left unmanaged, invasive alien trees would eventually consume around 60% of the country's yearly runoff. The Suntum Insurance Group has noted that some invasive alien trees are key drivers of fire risk in parts of the country. The Insurance Group further recommended that controlling and eradicating these trees is a critical component of managing fire risk. Poor vegetation cover results in soil erosion and the subsequent siltation of built water infrastructure. Poorly functioning wetlands and the removal of natural vegetation buffers along the riverbanks means that the natural function of filtering pollutants from the water cannot take place. 
Naturally functioning ecosystems will assist society in adapting to climate change through protection from more frequent and intense disasters, such as floods, droughts and fires, and through supporting water security and local food security. A recent study by the Santam Group in the Eden District, Western Cape, has shown that the proactive management and restoration of ecological infrastructure can significantly offset most of the future increases in risk related to climate change. Within this context, we are focusing on the ecological infrastructure of naturally functioned freshwater ecosystems able to deliver sustainable service. What is ecological infrastructure? Ecological infrastructure refers to the natural or semi-natural structural elements of ecosystems and landscapes that are important in delivering ecosystem services. You can think of it as a glove a person who is about to slide his hand over a coarse wooden beam wears to protect his hand. It serves as a buffer between the effects of natural disasters and us. Ecological infrastructure supports South Africa's economy by providing essential services and reducing risk. It's an asset or stock from which a range of valuable services flow. Investing in ecological infrastructure involves devoting time, effort, finances and making decisions that support the maintenance of functioning ecological infrastructure and the restoration of degraded ecological infrastructure. Although lots of work has already gone into changing the situation and progress has been made, we have essentially just started. Water is South Africa's most critical natural resource and is a vital element for sustainable economic growth. Investing in ecological infrastructure should be seen as a means of risk reduction. In a World Bank publication of 2012, it is stated that disaster risk reduction and prevention is an important aspect of a resilient society and is often less costly than disaster relief and response. In the floods, in 2023, we've captured some study cases revealing some real-life examples of how active rehabilitation of riverbanks has resulted in reduced flood damage to infrastructure. Investments in ecological infrastructure can be done in the following ways. Clearing invasive alien plants from catchments and riparian areas. Active rehabilitation of rivers and wetlands. Maintaining buffers of natural vegetation in riparian areas. Improving agricultural management practices. Establishing and maintaining protected areas and conservations, to just name a few. We need to ensure that we do not lose more of our healthy or largely unmodified rivers by maintenance and consensuous management of legislation aimed at river health. It is still possible to have a big impact on the moderately modified systems through restoration. With badly deteriorated rivers, it becomes more difficult and the cost and risk of interventions drastically increase, but simultaneously the need for these services also increases. The drive to restore our ecological infrastructure is a multi-level effort, with each of us having a role to fulfill. It covers a spectrum ranging from natural government ensuring funding and legislative processes, all the way down to the man on the street not dropping a piece of plastic on the ground. So we've reached a critical time in the history of our planet where the actions that we put in place to safeguard biodiversity and ecosystem function are no longer a nice to have. Restorative activities such as those underway in the riparian systems of the bird breeder catchments are indeed a necessity and they're required because we need to avoid system collapse. And we hope that our vision of a biodiverse, fully functioning and productive landscape can be shared and replicated globally through the research that we do and through the actions that we have put in place on the ground.